Golf. It's got its business card right on the front of it. This is Trump International Hotel and Tower from 2009, designed by Chicago's very own Skidmore, Owings & Merrill architecture firm. We call them SOM for short. They're a world-famous architecture firm based in Chicago. This building is a really good example of a style of architecture known as contextualism. Contextualism. Let me break down how this style works. It's one of my favorites. You'll notice three patio setbacks at various heights along the building. You've got two on the right and one on the left. Those are at really specific heights. This first one on the right is at the same height as the roof of the Wrigley building we just talked about. That one on the left, same height as the roof of that domed building across the river, the jeweler's building. And that one on the right is at the same height as the roof of the boxy black building that's hiding behind Trump Tower on the other side. So contextualism is a form of site-specific design where you design a building to be in relationship with its surroundings. And the cool thing is, is that can literally be anything nearby. Other buildings, the river, the sky, trees, landmarks, anything. If you pick this building up, put it somewhere else in the city, it just wouldn't look quite so good. Now the lead architect on Trump Tower, his name is Adrian Smith. And Adrian Smith is often called the world's tallest architect. He's only 5'7". My students would call him a medium-sized king. But he did design most of the world's tallest buildings. That's how we got that nickname, Adrian Smith. Now that name will pop up later on the tour, so see if you can remember it. Adrian Smith, I warned you, I'm a teacher. Going for comprehension and retention, folks. Looking for my gold star students. Coming into view on the right, though, we do have two of the most photographed structures in the city. It'll be obvious why when you see them. To our right, we have the twin corn cob towers of Marina City. Now, Marina City was designed and built in the 1960s by architect and visionary social scientist Bertrand Goldberg. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to tell you about how this river was super gross for most of Chicago's history. In the 60s, when Marina City was built, the river was nasty and smelled bad. No one lived down here. It was industrial and commercial, but not residential. Goldberg, the architect, he wanted to change that. He wanted people to start living downtown like they do in Europe. But there was no support for it, because there were no restaurants in this area, no entertainment, nowhere even to wash your clothes. So he put it all in his building and designed the country's first mixed-use residential skyscraper complex. A city within a city, starting right here in Chicago with these corn cobs. So let's imagine for a moment it's the 1960s. You want to move into Marina City, this is what you're going to get. First, you'll move it upstairs, where you have to furnish a pie slide shaped apartment, which is in the top. But then you're going to live above your valet parked car, your parked yacht, because who doesn't have a yacht? A restaurant, movie theater, bowling alley shops, office space, fitness center, laundry facility, and an ice skating rink. A city within a city. Yeah. Now I know some of you are wondering if anyone's ever driven a car off of one of those balconies into the river. Yeah, well, the answer is, this is America! Of course we did! It was in the movie The Hunter. Steve McQueen drove a car off of one of those balconies at the river. It was an iconic action scene. You can look it up on YouTube, The Hunter. Folks, Marina City was such a smash, such a success, that Goldberg began to change our attitude towards the river. We began to embrace it. We continued to build alongside it and cleaned it up. And by 2016, we sealed the deal when we finished our gorgeous river walk here to our left. Now this river walk travels 1.3 miles, the entire length of the main branch. It cost $112 million. And it was worth every penny. It's brought more people to the edge of the river than we ever imagined would be possible. Now, I am a huge fan of uh, the architect of the Riverwalk. Her name is Carol Ross Barney. She designed each section of the Riverwalk between two bridges to have its own distinct purpose and personality. She calls them rooms. And my favorite room on the Riverwalk is actually up ahead to our left, where you see people sit on those steps. That's called the River Theater. Now, for a long time, I didn't know why it was called that. Until early this summer, my partner and I took our dog to the River Theater. We sat down there for a few hours and I realized, oh, the river is the show. Party boats, tour boats, kayaks, yachts, all kinds of action happening here on the river. It's a great way to spend a few hours of your day. Now folks, there are not many river walks on Earth, let alone river walks this beautiful. So please take advantage of the river walk while you're in town. Spend a few hours of your day exploring it. You get beautiful views from that lower angle and it's full of shops, bars, and restaurants, so there's a lot to do on the Riverwalk. But the area of the city to the left, where the Riverwalk is located, it does have a nickname. It's called the Loop. Pretty simple reason why. Our public trains loop around this downtown city center. And we also have a nickname for our trains. We call them the L, which is short for elevated, since most of the tracks are raised above the ground. 
Now listen, I like to encourage visitors to the city to be bold. 